In this video, I'm going to be comparing three of the most popular wireless keyboards on the market and reveal which one I think is the best wireless keyboard for productivity. I'll be comparing the main features that each wireless keyboard has to offer and make sure you watch until the end because I'll be doing a typing speed test to see which wireless keyboard is the fastest. And we're starting right now. Let's go through five of the main features that we'll be looking out for in order to find our best keyboard for productivity. Number one, wireless or Bluetooth connectivity. Now it sounds obvious, but anything that helps make the desk look less cluttered and clean is a must. Simplicity and productivity go hand in hand and having a wireless keyboard on your desk is a great feature. It also allows you to sit back in your seat and still use the keyboard and not have to worry about the cable being pulled or being too short. Number two is multi-device support. Now this might be a bit of an overkill, but I think the keyboard should be able to support up to three devices at once. I've currently got a desk setup that contains two laptops, one for work and one for personal use, as well as a more portable Surface Pro that also doubles up as a tablet. So that's three devices in total, plus I've got my phone as well. Therefore, I just need a keyboard that is constantly able to switch between the three devices. Let me know in the comments below how many devices you're currently using. Three, having a return key or an enter key on your keyboard that is full size. Now this one is a bit controversial because I know that many people who can speed type at extremely fast speeds don't really mind having small return keys on their keyboard. However, in my opinion, when you start to expand the use of applications through the keyboard, then I think having a full size return key can make a big difference in your workflow. Let me know in the comments below what you think and which one you currently prefer using. Number four, backlit keys. Being able to see the keys during low light conditions is a very important factor these days. Whilst this might not be as important for those that can type without looking down at the keyboard, I still think that inevitably there will be scenarios when you need to just look down at your keyboard and not being able to see the keys can be very frustrating. For example, these days we all use a huge range of different applications on our computers and each has its own unique shortcuts that we like to use. And finally, the fifth criteria is long battery life. Basically, in my opinion, there is no point in having a wireless keyboard if you have to keep charging it all the time. And therefore, you end up using it as a wired keyboard anyway, which is quite frustrating. Generally speaking, most wireless Bluetooth keyboards come with two types of battery sources. The first type are those that require either a AA or a AAA battery to power the keyboards. Personally speaking, I actually really prefer this option. And that's because the battery on these can last up to three years. Yes, you heard that right. Years. And then all you have to do is simply take out the batteries and replace them with brand new ones and you're good as new. And they really don't cost that much to replace. So what's there not to like about those, right? The second type are those that are powered using lithium ion batteries. These usually require a USB-C type cable to charge them. But the biggest downside of these is that they only tend to keep charge for a few weeks. At best, and over time, the battery will become weaker and you'll have to charge more often. The first on our list is the Logitech MK850 wireless keyboard. The pros include support for wireless connectivity for up to three devices. It's also got a whopping three year battery life. It's available in UK key layout and it also works with both PC and Mac. It's also got a full size keyboard with the numpad and it also has direct access to the function keys which actually is a really good bonus because it means you can use the keyboard as a normal keyboard with all the shortcuts without having to worry about switching between devices. And I'll talk through that in a little bit more detail when we go through our next option so you can really understand what I mean. You can also set the height of the keyboard to three different levels because it comes with adjustable tilt legs. Now let's talk about some of the things that I don't like about this keyboard. So the first thing we want to talk about is the elephant in the room, this wrist support. Whilst some people might think that it's actually an added bonus that it comes within the price, in reality, it's actually a nightmare to deal with because A, it's very, very difficult to clean and B, you can't actually remove it and swap it with one that you actually prefer. The second is the curved profile of this keyboard. It's an interesting design and one that is very unique and requires getting used to for it to be comfortable. 
It also doesn't come with any backlit keys, therefore it's very hard to see in low light conditions. And finally, for me, I think the keys on the keyboard are a little bit too sticky, and also they're just too loud to type with. Have a listen. The second option on our list is the Logitech K780 wireless keyboard. Just like the MK850, I love the fact that this comes with multi-device support for up to three devices. The battery life lasts for about two years, which again is massive. You can get this in the UK layout as well, and it's got a very low profile, so it sits very flat on the table. And it also doesn't come with high adjustable tilt legs, so, so that is something to bear in mind when you're choosing this keyboard. The most unique feature about this keyboard is this beautiful built-in integrated stand for tablet and phone placement. It's also got a very compact design, which is great if you're looking to take this keyboard with you on your travels. Having said all of that, I think the biggest downside for this keyboard is the fact that it doesn't have any backlit keys, which I find really frustrating because it just ruins the experience of using this keyboard in low light conditions. I also don't like the position of the multi-device switching keys because it's in the same place as the F1, F2, and F3 function keys, which can get annoying very quickly, especially if you use the function keys a lot. Having said all of that, I do actually love this keyboard and I love the fact that it's got a portable design and the fact that you can carry this in your bag with your laptop and tablet and you can be sitting in a cafe, all your devices are neatly placed on this holder rather than being spread across the table. And the third and final option on our list is the Logitech's MX Keys wireless keyboard. Before we get into the good stuff, I do just want to point out that this is the most expensive option on our list today. So it comes in this beautiful low profile design. It's also got these spherical keys that match the shape of your fingertips, which is actually very comfortable to type with. You can connect up to three devices, as well as switch between Apple, Windows, and Android. It has a low profile and you get a tactile responsive typing experience. The best feature though is this smart illumination, which basically means that the key lights on the keyboard only turn on when you move your hand close to the keyboard. It's the kind of thing you'd see in a Star Wars film. May the force be with you. It also has smart power management, which basically means that after about 21 seconds, the backlit keys will turn off by themselves. And actually, if it's daytime, then they're clever enough to sense that they shouldn't turn on, therefore they'll save your battery. But despite all of those efforts, unfortunately, the battery life on this keyboard is 10 days when you have the lights turned on, and it's about five months when you have them off altogether. It does support USB-C fast charging, therefore it doesn't actually take that long for the keyboard to be fully charged again. And finally, I love the smooth and quiet typing experience you get with this keyboard. Let's have a quick listen. Now that we've compared these keyboards individually, let's have a look at them all together to see how they compare against each other. The first thing we're going to do is a size comparison. As you can see from this view, it's pretty clear that the K780 is actually the most compact design of all the three keyboards. And that's primarily down to the way that certain keys have been placed. For instance, the arrow keys are placed underneath the return key. You also don't get the option of the home, insert, and page up and page down keys. And in terms of the height profile of each keyboard, clearly the MK850 is the highest and the K780 is the lowest. Having said that, I think the MX Keys does give you that sort of middle ground, which, which is sort of the perfect height actually that you need for a keyboard to rest nicely with your wrists. And finally, let's do a comparison of the typing speed test. I'll be using a website called tentfastfingers.com. Now this is going to be a live typing speed test. Therefore, if you do want to skip ahead, then feel free to look at the timestamps in the description below. Oh, and if you haven't done one of these before, then I'd highly recommend it because it can get quite addictive and fun. So if you do go ahead and try it, then put it in the comments below and let me know which keyboard and what your speed was. Anyways, without any further ado, let's kick things off with Logitech's MX Keys.
So I managed to type 80 words per minute on the MX keys. The next speed typing test we'll be doing will be on the K780. Let's get going. So I managed to score 71 words per minute on that one, which was a little bit less than the MX keys. The next option and final option is our MK850. Let's get going. So on the MK850, I only managed to score 64 words per minute, which is the lowest score out of all the three keyboards on our range today. The Logitech MX Keys is the best overall option in my opinion. I've been using it well over a year now and it's still as good as new. It's perfect for those people that have more than two PCs or Macs on their desk. Whilst the battery life could have been a bit longer, I don't mind it as much because I only ever use the MX keys on my desktop and there's always a USB-C cable at hand to charge. Whilst this is a very expensive wireless keyboard option for most people, I still believe that it has all the key features needed to be the best wireless keyboard for productivity. Having said all of that, I do still believe that it does come down to your personal preference because I don't think there is really a one-size-fits-all option. In For instance, I actually own both the MX keys and the K780 keyboards. And that's because the MX keys is just too large to carry around. Therefore, I need something more compact, which is where the K780 comes in handy when I am traveling. Let me know in the comments below which one of these features for your wireless keyboard you would prioritize or rank the highest. And if you made it this far, then thank you so much for watching. If you got some value out of this video, then please make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you check out this video next.